We have the Dolphins and the Jets. Boom. All the way across the pond in London. <laughs> you know what's funny? Just last week. Yeah. A lot of our diatribe on the Jets and the Dolphins was who's better, who's worse. And I think we actually both said we think the Dolphins are worse and the Jets are a little bit better. And lo and behold, we were correct. Jet, Jets won. Yeah. So we were right on that one. So I just want to – we're not we're not necessarily often right. So I feel like it needs to be brought to attention. Especially when we're both agreeing on it. You know, <laughs> right. Like like, that. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I, I want to I wanna bring up um, one of the funniest. You texted me at like 8.30 in the morning when the game started up. And you're like, man, it's a little weird hearing uh, God save the queen during an NFL game. It, it was. It really was. Um, I, just, I like cracked up we'll, laughing. I'm like, holy shit. You know, we'll, we'll go off on a tangent on the late call right. about some of this European and national other continental expansion intercontinental right. to use a wrestling term this is <laughs> but, definitely uh, like um, it ties into where our late call segment this week is going right. to be which is about uh, NFL it was uh, I'm not going to lie this game was too damn early and I fell asleep during this game oh I watched the whole thing and it also wasn't the most exciting game so that didn't help but uh, there was it, I mean there was moments and there wasn't like, bad but it wasn't enough to keep me up, <laughs> so I did. I did go back and rewatch the highlights. Yeah. So, well, I think I I went to bed early on Friday. So. Yeah. Uh. Well. Anyways. I, I don't want to talk about my Saturday. It, <laughs> it went. It, it went into Sunday. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, overall, I mean, the Jets did what they were supposed to do and beat the Dolphins, and I think. That we said this was a must-win game for the Dolphins, yeah. and they blew it. And look what happened: Joe Philbin got fired. Yep. So I think us saying it was most must-win was also right. Not saying that was a genius prediction. I feel like anyone could have saw that. Can I say it definitely uh, turned out to be true? One thing about the whole Joe Philbin being fired is sure, uh, sure. Literally the day before it happened. Uh, I heard multiple sports analysis saying, you know, do you fire Joe Philbin? Is it too early? And every single one of them said, do not fire Joe Philbin. That'll be a terrible call on the Dolphins. And what did they do? Uh, I guess they'll have to prove themselves to see if it was a good call or not. You know what? But I actually kind of agree what what some people were saying is because look, they went already through summer training camp. They went through the whole right. preseason. They already have a game mindset going into the season. Now you fire your head coach, and you're gonna come up there and be like, okay. okay, all the shit that you guys are already doing, just forget it. Just everything, just forget it. We're gonna start a whole new strategy. Maybe it'll work, but it's kind of like a long shot to me. Well, it wasn't working anyway, so they've got nothing to lose. What they get last place in the division, or they get last place in the division? Worst case scenario, I mean, true. That they they is, can only go point. up. So, I think the main thing is because la after the performance last season, me myself included had a lot of expectations. I thought the Dolphins were going to be the second best team in this division. Yeah. I really did. They had a good season last season, comparatively speaking, at least. And everything looked like it was going in the right direction. Tannehill was getting a rhythm, looked like a good quarterback. Everything just looked good, you know. Jarvis Landry, great receiver. Yeah. And uh, then for some reason, they just came out and they sucked, <laughs> you know. And so, I mean, shit, I totally get why they fired him. I don't have a strong opinion of it one way or another. Okay, maybe they could have let him play another game. Maybe they could have even let him finish the season. But it just shows that the GM was like, well, this isn't working clearly. This isn't what we were expecting. They were, I think it was more of a result of high expectations and, and low results, you know, that he you got know, fired. On top of that. Anything else. Yeah. On, on top, top of all of that, here's what the bad call is like, with the GM. You paid Tannehill during the offseason a giant contract extension. Too much money. Too, too much, much money. Too, too much, much money for a guy who didn't make playoffs yet. Right. Too much money for a guy who's going third-year pro 
and has he had potential. That's the thing. They they right. bought in to potential in, in a quarterback, which is right. never a good idea. Uh, I mean, even realistically, the first year that Aaron Rodgers came out, like after right. sitting on the bench from Brett Favre, like, yeah, okay, you sat behind Brett Favre, you learned a lot. But even Aaron Rodgers' first year, even I wouldn't have agreed to pay Aaron Rodgers that amount of money your first year in. Like, that's just yeah, too and, much. And, like, and they made the playoffs. And they did make the playoffs, you know, exactly. Got robbed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure we don't need to get into that right now. Right, that's a whole other subject. But I'm just saying... You already bought in too much to your quarterback. Then you sign Dominic and Sue, who is the highest paid defensive player right now, and he has yeah. zero sacks. He's not doing anything for you. You shot yourself in the foot. Your salary cap is so fucking high that you can't even try to do anything else with your team because you're, you're just, just locked in with what you have. You know what? Uh... I've actually seen a story on this earlier this week, and we've talked about this a little bit before, but I think this is a great spot to mention it again. Uh, J.J. Watt, so, you know, at least on paper, were the two best defensive linemen in the game last year. And what about this um, season? There was one more. Well, whatever. Okay. okay, two of the best. Maybe maybe Sue's number three. But anyway, uh it just shows that they can't carry a team. They're not worth these huge contracts without an offense or without, you know, there's got to be something around them other than just them. They can't carry the defense by themselves. They can't carry the team by themselves. Yeah. You can't get to the playoffs. I mean, why do you think the Lions, everyone was saying, oh, I can't believe they're cutting him. It's crazy. The Lions look like, you know, they didn't get the worst of it. I know they – haven't won a game yet, but it, it's like, would it really have made a difference? They, yeah. they have some room to try to build up something now by cutting him that they would have still been almost as bad, even with him. I mean, look at the Texans. They have who the undisputable best defensive lineman in the game, and he can't carry the team. No. So the Dolphins spent all this money on a quarterback and a defensive lineman, and they don't have enough money left really for anything else. And... After all the hype and all the talk, uh, you know, after last year, I think the Dolphins are looking at a, a rough couple years again. Yeah, it's gonna, it is going to be a while before. Uh, it's going to be a while before they even potentially could try to resolve all of this. Especially with the East looking as good as it is. Yeah. You know, the Patriots still there. The, uh, the Now, the timing might work out for them in the end because it looks like it's going to be hard to dethrone the Patriots with Belichick and Brady, but... Maybe they can get their shit together when that regime's coming to an end. Yeah, which <laughs> but, uh, still doesn't look like it's been for a few years yet. Right, but. right. But it looks like that might be how long it takes the Dolphins to make a comeback. Yeah. So and it looks pretty you, miserable are you gonna keep, right now. You know, are you going to keep Tannehill that entire time? I, I don't uh, remember how many years his contract is signed for, but right. I, I mean, what, what if he progressively plays worse? You know, what I think you, you got to try to do some renegotiations with him and just be like, look. Do you want money or do you want a ring? Yeah. Straight up. I mean, what do you want? Because you're going to have to take less money to win. I mean, all these quarterbacks. It's why Brady's got another ring. He cut his contract up, and they left some, you know, some salary space, and they hired some players and won, won another ring. Yeah, yeah. So it just comes down to that. And otherwise, the Dolphins are they're not to make a – you know what? I'm going to make a pun. They're dead in the water. <laughs> I liked it. I liked yeah. it. Yeah. And the Bills and the Jets and all them, you know. I guess the Jets in particular, who we should mention, still don't look great, but shit, they won. Their season's not over yet. So good hey, luck, guys. I like <laughs> bearded Ryan Fitzpatrick. I actually joked around yeah. that I was going to buy a Ryan Fitzpatrick jersey and go with him for Halloween this year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Maybe not anymore. <laughs> no, I think I still would. Okay. Um,. No, right. realistically, I won't. No. You know, the thing is, I know last week you kind of got upset with the Jets because they lost when you just kind of got done saying that you predicted right. that they might still make the playoffs, you know, with three right. coming out of the division. But here's the thing. You got Chris Ivory back. He's the third 
uh, ranked running back with the most motor yards this year. Right. As of right now. Um, you have Eric Decker and Brandon Marshall on the outside, uh, who are both very good you know, wide receivers. Offensively, the Jets have a lot going on for them. Defensively, right. they have a lot going on for them. So I guess in a way, when you see you know some of these losses like what we saw last week with the Jets, sure. it's surprising because Ryan Fitzpatrick, I think, has come up and I mean, let's be honest here. When Geno Smith is eligible to come back, do you even want him? I would keep his. I don't. I don't think you start him. I think he lost his. I think he lost his starting job. Oh yeah, now. for, for uh, sure. I think he's because yeah. Ryan Fitzpatrick isn't doing bad. I mean, I think he had like two touchdowns, one interception. So, so yeah, he's making maybe some mistakes, but not mistakes that are losing games. Always, at least. Uh, I think it's early enough in the season that this team still has a lot of time to get into a rhythm, to get more in sync amongst each other and see what they can really do. And to the point where they could potentially even kind of mess up how the AFC East looks. Uh, I mean, Patriots most likely still going to win a division, but you know they could be a contender of taking one of the... Uh, wild card spots. Maybe. You could potentially see. I, I made my original prediction was three AFC East teams, and I don't know if I, I would still make that same prediction. But it's not unheard of. I don't think the Jets. It's it's possible. It's not the most laughable situation for to see the Patriots, the Bills, and the Jets all in the playoffs. But I also don't think it's the most. Uh, I don't know. I was just feeling it that day when I made that prediction for some reason. But you know, he, he, despite the win, despite the you know the bad loss to Philly, uh, you know, it is what it is. They are, <laughs> you know, I said earlier that uh, you know, maybe your record isn't what you say, what it says you are, or whatever. But you are what your record says you are, and. The Jets are getting better, so the record says they're getting better, and they're they're maybe getting a little better and showing some fight. Unlike the Dolphins, they are definitely not dead in the water yet. So, I go. I just think that there's a lot of potential. It's almost ironic in a way that these two teams matched up, and the potential that we saw in the Dolphins last year, I All think, right. is now gone to the Jets. I think the Jets totally stole it. That was a critical matchup in that division yeah and the jets kind of i mean like us you know it's week four it's far from over but uh this video is close to over okay well on top of that i still think that the jets definitely are going to be a team that i would like to continue watching throughout the weeks and see what they can do if you would also like to watch the jets and the dolphins maybe Maybe the Dolphins won't be uh, fish dead out of water. Maybe it'll no, they're still... dead. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. The end. Speaking of subscribing, we do have a Facebook and a Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you like that segue? Do you like that segue? Facebook. That 